Hi folks, Bruce Kolodny here. I'm a California gun attorney, gunlaw.com. For over 30 years, I've been defending gun owners in California, the state which without question has the strictest gun laws in the entire United States. This video is one of three that I've made, which covers the subject of if you've lost your gun rights, can you restore them? Uh, the subject of this video is the loss of gun rights due to mental health issues. Two of the other reasons uh, for losing gun rights, which are covered in other videos here on YouTube, are criminal records and restraining orders. Now, with mental health reasons, uh, the most common reason here in California is what's known as a 5150. And that refers to Section 5150 of the California Welfare and Institutions Code. Well, what is a 5150? It's a provision in the law that allows you to be detained against your will for up to 72 hours to be evaluated by a psychiatrist to determine if you're a danger to yourself, a danger to others, and or gravely disabled. If, and what the code says here in California, and the courts have backed it up, is that if you're detained pursuant to 5150, you're assessed and admitted to a mental health facility for evaluation by a psychiatrist, that results in the imposition of a five-year California prohibition on firearms, and other related items such as ammunition, magazines, etc. Now, if this happens to you, uh, you have a, a right to have a hearing before a judge to determine if the five years should, uh, prohibition should stay in place. And unfortunately, the code does say that the district attorney will represent the people, even though it's not technically a criminal matter, and they have the burden of proving by a preponderance of the evidence, which is a very low standard of proof, that, you're not a, a, that you are not a person who can be expected to use firearms in a safe and lawful manner if the five-year prohibition is terminated early. Now, unfortunately, I can, and I can tell you this from years of experience in front of many different judges, quite often in the courtroom, the way it works in real life is the, it, you're treated as though the burden is on you to establish that you, you will use firearms in a safe and lawful manner. Now, uh, why, you're probably wondering, why on earth would I get taken in for a 72-hour psychiatric evaluation? Well, there's two common reasons in my experience, either domestic discord at home or people who are grieving. And let me give you some examples. Here's a common scenario. Man comes home from work. Wife tells them she saw a divorce attorney that afternoon or she has uh, an appointment to see a divorce attorney the next day or she's been having an affair, and by the way, guess what? It was with your best friend. Man says something like, I'm not gonna be able to go on living without you. Takes a bottle of Jack Daniels, goes out to the garage. Wife gets on the phone. Somebody tells her, oh my God, that's where he has his gun safe. He's gonna take his guns out. He's going to shoot the kids sleeping in their bed. He's gonna shoot you, shoot himself. Then the 911 call is made, and then it's all downhill from there. Pretty soon the helicopter's circling overhead. There's six to ten squad cars out in front of your house. Every gun they can find in the house is uh, taken, and you're taken away to the mental health facility. <coughs> the other reason I see is uh, sometimes people will be grieving. Usually it's over the tragedy of a loss of a child, perhaps in a motor vehicle accident. Maybe a surgery didn't go as expected, and they say something, again, to the effect of, I'm not going to be able to go on living without you. People say this routinely. Most people never act on it. But sometimes uh, the do-gooders think, oh, you've got to go to the mental health hospital. So, now, um, in addition to 5150, California also has something called 5250. And again, that's a section of the California Welfare and Institutions Code. And what 5250 says is that at the end of the initial 72-hour hold, if the psychiatrist in charge of the facility believes that you uh, need to stay longer, but either A, you will not agree to do so voluntarily, or B, you feel uh, they feel that you lack the legal capacity to agree to stay on voluntarily, then they can extend the initial 72 hours by up to an additional 14 days. And this is a real problem because uh, the ATF takes the position that that's a, commit, a, a commitment for mental health reasons, thus resulting in a, a permanent lifetime firearms prohibition under federal law, which means in every state in the United States, not just California. So if you ever find yourself in this predicament, 
and you're told that your stay, initial stay is being extended under 5250, ask for a hearing before a judge. Now, <clears throat> a little word to the wise about how to avoid getting entangled in this mental health morass. Uh, be careful what you say when you're under stress. And that includes talking with your physician or even with a, let's say you're frustrated, you're trying to get some much needed medical help and you're talking to a clerical type at your health insurance company and you say, what do you want me to do? Just shoot myself? That can be all it takes, folks, for you to end up as a 5150 detainee. Now, a 5150 hold, uh, a detention, can result in up to three separate but related cases. First, there's the 5150 and the five-year prohibition. Now, you do have, remember, you have a right to a, a hearing before a judge to contest that. That's known as an 8103 hearing. Again, that's from the that's Welfare and Institutions Code, Section 8103. Also, the law enforcement agency that seized the guns can file what's known as a petition for judicial determination, and that's under Section 8102. And they're basically asking a judge uh, to order the destruction or other disposal of your firearms on grounds that you're a danger to self or danger to others or both. This happen, This normally is done by the city attorney or county council or sometimes it's an outside law firm providing city attorney services for the local uh, police department and the rest of the city where this happens. <clears throat> if you receive such a notice, and usually it will come by mail, so uh, if you're detained under 5150 and your guns are seized um, and you receive this type of official mail, it will look like a lawsuit. You need to contact me right away because if you don't file a timely request for a hearing, you can lose by default and your guns can be ordered destroyed. Now the third type of separate but related hearing that a 5150 detention can result in is a criminal case. For example, uh, unfortunately you end up in a situation where you're detained under 5150, taken from your house, and they seize your guns. If uh, law enforcement uh, finds one or more guns that they believe are unlawful to possess, for example, uh, what they claim is an assault weapon that wasn't properly registered, then you can have a criminal case for unlawful possession of an assault weapon. All right, now if you've been detained under 5150, uh, what do you do? Well, first off, uh, and most importantly, you have to lawfully and quickly transfer your firearms. Unlike restraining order uh, firearm prohibitions, which again are covered in one of my other YouTube videos, this five-year firearms uh, prohibition or five-year gun ban takes effect immediately. So except for those firearms classified as antiques under federal law, you have to immediately transfer your firearms. And there's two ways to, uh, to do this. You either transfer them uh, to a friend or relative and this is what's known as a private party transfer. It has to be, the transfer has to be processed through a California licensed firearms dealer. And the way that you do this is you, uh, there's a special statutory limited power of attorney that's available uh, as a PDF file that you can download on the California Department of Justice Bureau of Firearms website. You and whoever you've selected to take <clears throat> take possession of your firearms while the ban is in effect. Go to a notary public. You both sign the power of attorney. Uh, you give one copy to your friend. Uh, he comes back to your house, takes any guns that weren't taken uh, during the police raid, and uh, the two of you go to a gun shop. You travel in separate vehicles. Then you, uh, he takes the guns inside, and you do the transfer. Both of you will fill out paperwork. Uh, he'll fill out more than you because the guns are going to be transferred to him. And then at the end of the 10-day waiting period, he goes back, uh, completes a little bit more paperwork, and then he takes the guns home. Now, um, let's talk about what this five-year firearm prohibition includes. And this is, in, in California, when you're prohibited from firearms, you're prohibited from more than just firearms. First off, it includes all firearms, whether they're antique firearms or modern firearms, pursuant to, Cal uh, pursuant to federal law. Federal law says that if a firearm is manufactured before the year 1899, it's an antique. Federal law also provides that if a firearm is manufactured and does not use fixed ammunition, in other words, it's a muzzle-loading firearm, like a cap and ball revolver, 
then it's an antique. But in California, uh, whether it's an antique or a modern firearm under federal law, you're prohibited from it. You're also prohibited from possessing a firearm frame or receiver. You're prohibited from possessing ammunition and ammunition reloading components. And you're prohibited from possessing magazines, clips, speed loaders, or any type of ammunition feeding device. Technically, that means even if you had a World War I cloth machine gun belt, just a piece of cloth, you can't, uh, you can't possess it. Now, if this happens to you, um, and by the way, with ammunition and magazines that will not hold more than 10 rounds, uh, those can simply be given to the trusted friend or relative. As long as they're an adult, you don't have any reason to believe that they're prohibited from firearms. Now, the next step with, uh, that you want to uh, take is you want to gather up all your paperwork. That would be all the papers you were provided at the mental health hospital. And um, usually, but not always, you're given a, a receipt by the law enforcement agency for the seizure of your firearm. Sometimes it's given to you as you're handcuffed in the squad car. Sometimes it's left on the kitchen table or with somebody at the residence. But you're going to need all that paperwork because you want to come and see me to see if you can uh, have this five-year firearms prohibition overturned. Now, what I, want you, what I want to warn you not to do is to go to court without me and then call me the afternoon after you went to the hearing yourself and you lost. Basic rule in the law, you want to win at the trial court level. You don't want to, I mean, if you have to go up on appeal, that's one thing, but you want to put on the best possible case at the trial court level. Uh, numerically, most appeals are not successful, so again, put a maximum effort into your trial court case. All right. If you have other questions, if you want more information, please visit my website, gunlaw.com. If you've been detained under 5150, uh, please call my office, 1-800-560-8000. Finally, I'm a lawyer, so I have to give you a disclaimer. This video provides general information only. If you're concerned about your personal situation, uh, call me. Also, this information is subject to change based on new laws. Uh, repeal of old laws, which is very unlikely to happen in California, or successful court challenges. And there, uh, there's a bright ray of hope. Uh, the pro-Second Amendment community in the United States has had a number of substantial victories in court, including before the United States Supreme Court, the landmark cases, uh, opinions in Heller and McDonald. So don't give up the fight. The Second Amendment is precious. It's the defender of all the other rights in the Bill of Rights. All right, good shooting, happy hunting, and that's all, folks.